So firstly, uh, welcome Shipra and uh, all the guests that have tuned into this session of What's the Plan? Uh, this webinar is a part of an ongoing series of design out that aims to spotlight progressive architecture that is emergent in India and in other parts of the world really. Let me begin by introducing Shipra. Uh, Sketch Design Studio is a small creative practice that is led by Shipra. Uh, and uh, the young firm has changed gears from only working on urban interior design projects to now developing unique earth architecture. The firm provides cutting edge modern solutions that are eco-friendly, practical, and of course, aesthetically stunning. Its creations are not reproductions of the historical past. Instead, they make use of time-tested construction techniques, but express them using modern syntax. So Shipra uh, Singhanya Sanghi began her life in culturally vibrant uh, Lucknow before moving on to study and work in cities like Panchkani, Mumbai, and London. And during her travels, she continued to learn about various civilizations and indulge in her passion for history. So she's always been passionate about bringing back vintage crafts and creative forms and currently holds a degree in interior and spatial design from Rachna Sansad in Mumbai and the University of Arts in London. And of course, now she's a fervent uh, advocate of earth architecture. So I thought maybe Shipra, we could start by uh, really uh, discussing or setting a backdrop in terms of how you really got to where you are at in terms of your education, the past assignments that you've been engaged with, uh, and maybe your previous involvement with more uh, conventional forms of uh, design and architecture. So if you could take us through that, and then we could maybe dive into some of the more interesting things that you're doing. Um, yes, so um, hi, everybody. And uh, thank you uh, for inviting me here on this uh, amazing platform. And uh, I really appreciate what you're doing because uh, something like this, I think is very important because when I was young and I was looking at what the world and our field is doing, um, I did not have too many options to really know. So congratulations to what you're doing. <laughs> so uh, starting of my journey, um, I studied interior design and, um, um, but I think I was, from the very beginning, I was quite passionate about um, earth architecture because even in my college, I did a few projects that were about Adobe and you know earth architecture. But you know how you grow and you enter the world, and then there are these um, uh, interior design platforms and the kind of uh, work opportunities we keep getting. So that's how I entered into more urban because also because of my travels. I entered into more an urban conventional interior design um, things. And that's what how I started my firm as well. Um, but because there was, I think, um, always a bent. And um, I also got a few opportunities from a few clients who um, asked me to design spaces for them, which were more about farm to table experiences and you know agricultural uh, spaces and agricultural lands. And um, that's how I, th I I thought that maybe I should push myself a little further ahead into earth architecture and try and experience um, what it is and how it is to actually build. And uh, that's how I started this project, uh, Golghar. And um, once Golghar started, then there was definitely not looking back. So, and uh, today we are already uh, working on uh, five more projects and almost about to get over two of two more are about to get over in this year and hopefully more more so on. Wonderful. So now uh, the move from working in urban areas to now in sort of these very urban and, and rural areas, how, how has that transition been for the studio and for yourself? I would imagine it's the, the context and the I mean, the working style and, and everything must be so different and challenging uh, in terms of what you're commonly used to. So how, how is that transition? Been? It is actually very different. Um, so when you're working in urban areas, uh, the kind of pe people we meet, the, the way we work is very different of how when we are working on the rural ground. Um, but it's also very interesting. So first of all, if we talk about an architecture, an architect's journey or like a person, like my journey. 
um i think it's very important to first understand uh, what the what the local community really wants and how they want to communicate so we can't be the bosses and we can't say that this is what i want so you have to do this right how how we work in the urban platform so here it's more about how we work with them so and um, it's and also when we start working with them with with the community um and the local masons and the local people we realize that they already have a lot of information and they have a lot of knowledge so this is what i realized too when i started working um so the masons the people i i was working with they had no experience in mud architecture before that but once i introduced a specific kind of technique and a sp specific kind of material then they were so quick to pick that up and take it take it a level forward the kind of finishing the kind of approach they had towards a certain kind of material so i think that is very um, very very admirable of um, how they performed so i think it's it's just how you know i work with them rather than not like they working for me so i think that was yeah important. what what about the references that that one draws i mean when you when you're when, of course when you're i've seen the work that you do and and the work that you have done in in your urban projects etc is is very sophisticated and and sort of very aesthetically derived and then you move into earth architecture and the buildings that i have seen are really they are not really replicas of of the past they they kind of have a a unique design language of of their own which is i would say more contemporary it's not really a A, a a direct kind of traditional copy paste that one has adopted so how is this experience been i mean where do you draw these references or how do you contextualize these buildings within the context that they are in and then of course create a, a kind of different uh, a modern kind of perception or a modern or a more contemporary uh, sort of expression to these buildings how how has that been for you so i think um, so while working with mud um, and any kind of natural material if we really want to be true to the material that we are using it with the material itself it draws a certain kind of aesthetic uh, brings in that particular kind of aesthetic and uh, from the very beginning uh, we wanted to be very true to the materials we were using so um, we didn't want to um, you know overlap too many things onto each other we wanted to show the material the way it is um that is why we used a lot of exposed uh forms um ramped earth and you know even the stone masonries that we've tried to do were more exposed forms of those uh, work um and that brings in its own aesthetic and then i mix my own aesthetic to it so which is more contemporary and you know and also inspiration drawn from the local areas so um so like uh, when we talk about the gold ghar so before we started uh, with this uh, project i did a lot of research where i actually went to a lot of villages where people were living in mud houses and um, sort of tried and understand try to understand how they are living what techniques are they using um in general um what is their lifestyle around in and around that house and um, incorporated those kind those things into my design as well um and i think amalgamation of all these three four different things came up to what this looks like today could you take us through the 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 house golgar also and if you could talk a little bit about who it was really built for and and really how did it uh, whether the design you finally created aligned with their perception of what their home would be like so uh, that entire experience if you could take us through that would be interesting so um not a lot of people know but this um house um golgar and mud koti both of them are actually designed on the same piece of land um and uh, which is which is owned by my mother in law and my father in law um and um, so my mother in law is a farmer and um, this is a permaculture farm where we were going to be building this these two houses on 
um so um because it was permaculture inspired farm so we did not want to um you know make use of very art many artificial elements so that is why the first inspiration was that that we wanted to use the local natural materials so that's what we used uh when we started uh, construction um the gol ghar is actually an it's more like an outhouse or a studio for a couple um that's why it's not very big um if you look at the layouts of gol ghar so gol ghar is like it's like a small um, room um where uh, there is one bed there's a small kitchenette attached to it is a bathroom which also opens on the outside so people who are not living in the room in the studio um guests can also actually use this bathroom and also there is a small store room which is a garden um garden store um which is a part of it so this is why this is the uh, the whole i mean the whole um, space the idea behind the space of gold ghar um and um um sorry uh, what was the other thing that you wanted to ask about no i i, I was asking whether the expression you finally created how did that really uh, align with the with with the clients and in this case i i imagine it's it's family so yeah. I, I, i there must have been possibly a lot of discussion and sharing of ideas etc uh, as you went along so uh, maybe how 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 was the final expression i mean how was the response of the of the of the family once they actually saw it so um they um, they absolutely love it and um, so there was no um, sort of any sort of idea differences um when the whole idea came up and of doing a circular house there is also a reason why we did a circular house it's not ki humne the so no socha and it came out um this land actually gets has very very high wind pressure because um this is in alwar and alwar is just beside the aravalli ranges and uh, this is the northwest corner of the whole plot so the wind pressure is really high from here um so that is why we created a circular studio so that when the winds um, they come on to the land the house doesn't get affected really because when it's a straight wall or a circular wall a circular wall will will perform better as compared to a straight wall and that is why we we decided that we will have a circular circular st looking studio over here um so that is why we did this and my family was quite um um with me on this idea because um, also you know there has to be has to be a reason why one is uh, designing something why one is giving certain kind of shapes or certain kind of materials so once that was in place then i think there was no um, cross questioning or sort of um, discussions over that so could you take us through also the 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 methods and the methodology that you have used uh, in terms of creating uh, in terms of creating this uh, this structure with with your earth bags and mud plasters etc yeah so um, so what uh, here in this in this house we used uh, one technique majorly which is uh, earth bags um what we did was earth bag is actually a very very simple uh, technique which um, even um, you know anyone can anyone can do so what we did was um we filled in we we, we got these cement bags the re reclaimed cement bags and we filled it with a certain mix of mud um and then we stitched them and um and then that became like a brick like a big size brick which which was also called a super adobe and then that was um that was um, sort of um you know laid over each other in layers like how we um, how do we do a brick wall similarly we use this um additional ad addition to just laying it over each other what we also did was um um we used uh, these 1 feet long bamboo um 1 feet long bamboo um, um long nails and then we put them over it and then these bamboo nails sort of held the two layers of uh, super adobes with each other um so so yeah on the screen you can see um 
my people um, building the the brick wall with with earth bags. So, so, so this, this was largely an earth earth bag construction. Could you also talk about maybe the challenges that happen in such kind of construction? What kind of earth does one use? I mean, are there any kind of precautions that one takes uh, whilst creating things like that? Do you have do you have some guidance or some guidelines to share in terms of uh, the challenges and of course what are the possible uh, 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 safeties that one needs to take while attempting such kind of construction? Um, so it's fairly easy. Um, it's um, it's not too much rocket science. So any kind of mud actually can be used. Um, over here, um, the kind of the soil which was uh, which we had was very is very silty, so full of silt. So we added. We had to get a um, a couple of other different kinds of soils which we could source them from a local quarry. So we have to develop a certain kind of mix. Uh, that only comes once you test your soil on the ground. So whatever kind of soil you have, you have to add a bit of sand, you have to bit bit of clay, and obviously um, one has to stabilize the soil. That means um, we use lime here, but you anyone can use lime or a little bit of cement to stabilize. And um, once you once you have read have a mix ready then um, you can just have to do a lot of testing so once once you've got after after all the tests you've got the right kind of mix ready then you can just move on and uh, go ahead and keep do keep building so that's then it's not a problem at all what what exactly are you testing for are you testing for settlement are you testing for what what is what is really the challenge when you are using these earth bags is there something specific that you are testing for uh, in terms of how the material behaves or how the soil behaves uh yes so actually with mud is that um, we need to stabilize uh, mud so that um, you know when it rains or when there is too much heat or it's too cold um the walls should remain sturdy enough mm -hmm. so uh when it's too cold i think it's fine but when it's too too hot sometimes earth walls start cracking if it has too much clay and um when it's raining then um they might they might um, melt out if it if it has too much sand so these are the kind of things that we need to test for um and um, so what what we did was that when we filled our um, earth bags with a certain kind of mud we sort of let it be in the sun and um, and then we um, after a certain amount of time we realized that the earth bag in itself became really really hard like how um, how a brick would become right really hard so that's how it became and um, then it we we also tried to cut it we poured a lot of water we kept it wet for a very long time so we sort of tried to do all these different kinds of uh, tests on the block to see how it's behaving if it's melting out or if it's staying the way it is or or or, or, or you know cracking up or something like that so so yeah so that's what we did before we started off this now is also a system for the roofs that uh, is is some kind of waterproofing screen that is being laid etc could you take us to what's what's happening over here on the screen so th this is actually the roofing system right of golgar yes yes so um if you see the mud house has two different roofs one is the flat roof and the tapered roof tapered roof is the thatch roof what you see right now on the screen is flat roof and this is lime um this is called a lime flat roof um we also call it bagra uh, bagre ki chhat in our local language over here um so and it is actually a very very old technique um till the late 1800s um sorry till the 19 late 1900s uh, a lot of houses still have used these techniques to build their houses um it is really simple we have these iron girders um these iron girders and um on top of the iron girders there were sheets of stone that was laid and then um over the sheet of stone if you can see this guy on the left um he's putting brick bats so he's he does a layer of brick bats 
uh, with lime and then we cover cover the entire brick bat layer with lime again and then we try we beat it uh, using jaggery water so why, why, why what, jaggery water yeah so jaggery is jaggery is like an adhesive so you know it has a very sticky quality uh, so it's an adhesive so what it does is when we mix jaggery in water we boil jaggery in water and then we um use that water and then we start beating it uh, lime also has this tendency of flaring up so it re releases um air and and that's why it cracks up when it as when it dries so when we beat it the air gets released and all the air pockets um get filled because we are beating the lime out so after by the time lime has dried out all the cracks are again filled up with the lime there is and then it becomes like a monolithic structure and um, jaggery water helps the lime stay where it is because of the adhesive quality and that is why it became it it becomes like this whole 6 inch thick or like a 4 inch thick um, solid roof and and also this house you've used uh, mud plasters uh, extensively right the, yes. what so again for that how is that different in terms of its application or safeguards etc what kind of goes into the mud plaster I, i would imagine it would again need some kind of adhesive quality some kind of binder etc for it to actually last and have some have some body to it so could you take us through your experiences with that yeah so um mud plasters also behave very differently with different materials um this definitely what we did was stabilized um because we wanted it to be long lasting um um so we used different so first of all when we started experimenting with mud plasters we started trying and testing different colors so we used oxide colors we used uh, natural colors um we used ash to get a gray cement kind of color um we used um um we used um, turmeric to get a slight yellow into the mix um so so you know we we used various kind of uh, techniques to get different colors out um fortunately uh, i i think everyone uh, from the shade card that we created on the walls of our golga the part golga we liked the natural liked color, the natural earth color so um that's what we did so for this um again we used various other various things so we used lime we used mud um a lot of places we also used uh, jaggery we used neem um um neem is like a insect repellent so a natural insect repellent so when we use um, neem into plasters then it helps keep termites keep ants away from the walls um so that is why we used um, turmeric and we used neem into our plasters and um, got this done in terms of laying the plaster it's very simple so if you have a mason who knows how to lay a cement plaster he'll be able to do it very easily it's it's a little more sticky than a normal cement plaster would be but then you know the uh, people who are skilled and who already have experience then it's not too much of a issue with anyone to perform these kind of things so now all this labor was all local labor sourced from the from the village or from the nearby vicinity yes yes all of them and they, and you and after these two projects have have they continued to stay with the firm in terms of doing other other projects which are kind of uh, similar in 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 their application yes they are full time with me <laughs> and they uh, i don't want to leave them they don't want to leave me so we developed like this really cool relationship um and yeah. from one project to the other they keep keep moving we are trying to now um train them in various new techniques as well and right now the whole entire team works on one project so we are now now trying to explore different ideas of how we can divide the team and have work and have them work in multiple projects at the same time so yeah i think we are all growing together <laughs> so so the mud koti if we could talk about this this then followed the golgar or or was this prior to the golgar 
that this that followed decided. the Golgar. This followed oh. the Golgar. Yes. So there were some learnings from Golgar that were then taken on to the mud koti. I'm sure there must have been some further improvements that happened as you went along. Yes, yes, lots of them. Um, even in, in terms of size, in terms of the kind of execution we were doing, um, uh -huh. the techniques that we already used in Golgar, we had to use them back because we had learned so much from the first project. And then okay. also um, we used a lot of new techniques which we had not used in the previous project to um, also understand how those work uh, because we'd also become more confident from the first project. Also, in its expression, it's really a very contemporary structure. I mean, it's it's a it's it's a it, you cannot uh, you cannot define it as being traditional. It's uh, it has these uh, elements to it that, of course, are referential to to traditional design. But uh, as a whole, it's it's really very con contemporary and has a I think a lot of craft also integrated into into the project. So, could you talk a little bit about that? I mean, it's a very refined aesthetic compared to even Golgar. And Golgar itself was uh, quite uh, uh, quite modern in that sense. So, could you take us through what what was the what was the difference here? I think rammed earth is has been used in in this particular project as well. Yes. Um, so, in this project, we used rammed earth uh, quite extensively, and um, earth bags we used. And uh, so, I think um, you know um, we we always talk about architecture and we talk about craft. The two different things but um, I feel architecture is also a kind of craft because these techniques which people work uh, I mean we are trying to work with um, and uh, these are really old techniques and people used to work with these techniques before you know many years ago when um, cement wasn't there or probably even when cement was there um, so and these are also like techniques like craft techniques which I will say just in a different kind of genre like in architecture so um, we are trying to revive those kind of things back through our practice um, and um, the, we also used a lot of uh, stone masonry in this project um, because stone masonry is a very very popular technique uh, which was used um, which is used in, in our area, in, in all around Rajasthan. And, um, and, and then addition to this, we used, um, we used um, rammed earth, we used flat roofs, we used um, earth bags. And uh, yes, rammed earth was actually something very new for my people and for me as well. I still knew about it, but uh, for my people, it was completely new. And uh, for them, initially, it was unbelievable because when I introduced them to something which is called as rammed earth and how it's done, uh, they said, Madam Ji, it will fall, it will not stop. Your earth bag has fallen because we had put it in the cuts, but it will open the cuts, it will fall out of the rain. But, uh, but uh, somehow when they started work on it and when they um, started to understand the soil and how it's behaving and how we are working, and um, so now they're so confident they don't need me so when uh, we are working on the soil uh, when and when we are working on the walls they are extremely confident of how it's going to stay or if it's going to stay or not and what's the life everything so also could you talk about this again the roofing system here is a little different uh, you've created these brackets uh, i think it's sandstone is it some type of sandstone that's used and, and of, also in terms of had these structures gone through really uh, one or two monsoons, I don't know how, how long back they have been built. So could you take us through the roofing element uh, first and also maybe some uh, thoughts on how these structures are behaving as you see them age? Um, so, um, yes. So here we actually, we have, um, so we wanted to do overhangs. And overhangs, um, if you're not doing, um, if you're not doing, a concrete structure then brick the then um, these brackets are the way to do overhangs and in the market uh, we do get ready made brackets stone brackets but then we decided to get them designed according to our requirement and uh, then these brackets are laid at certain intervals and then we rest the stone sheets on the brackets and that's how we create the overhang which is also like a natural chajja um 
for um, for a structure so um um the technique is um, more or less similar to what we did in golgar because it's the same thing there are these uh, iron sections and then uh, sheets of stone is laid in it and then there is um, so there we used brick bats because we did we wanted it we wanted the roof to be thin but here we wanted the roof to be thicker so that is why we used um, kulhars terracotta cups and also for the purpose of insulation so we used these terracotta cups and then we filled lime water on it and repeated the same repeated the same technique so have these gone through a, a monsoon yet or are they still to are these still houses still yet to go through the monsoon which is possibly kind of going to come in the next few months um so they have gone through uh, two monsoons already and um, yes and they are quite strong so one of the monsoons the first monsoon um, there were a few things which we had to repair and rework on so thankfully nothing major it was just it was just um, natural because um, lime has a tendency to crack and get build air gaps and those air gaps is when the when slightly the water was passing through but then we got those repaired and um, this monsoon was completely the monsoon that left that just went were um, the house was um, brilliantly well and um, and yeah so the walls the roof everything has already gone through two monsoons so i'm quite happy with the roof behaving i would imagine it's not only the monsoons but rajasthan also gets very hot and then very cold and you have monsoons so there's the 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 scale of uh, climate that you're dealing with is really across the spectrum and that yeah. would cause a lot of changes in the building itself and in how how these uh, sort of natural materials might behave so it, since it's been through i think too i think the possibly if something had to show up it would have shown up by now <laughs> yes yes and i think uh, because um, because uh, my family is using this house one uh, more very interesting thing which i am absolutely loving about the house is that i am getting to live with it so i am able to experience the house um, in all weathers uh, because yes we do see extreme climates we do see a lot of monsoons lot of winter and lot of um, summers and uh, the house actually behaves because i understand when people tell when people earlier used to tell me that natural a natural building is a living house it's not like a regular concrete house so it does go through a lot of changes with the weather um you know the the walls behave differently the roofs behave differently i can understand the circulation even if there is no window there is a certain kind of circulation that happens in the rooms um so it's very interesting to live it's it's like living with the house so it's very interesting to experience that journey living with the house so i mean it has been a learning curve i would imagine over the past couple of years and uh, you are now doing many other projects etc and you've experimented with a variety of techniques earth bags mud plasters these composite roofs brackets all of this stuff is are there other materials or certain other techniques which you are currently exploring or which interest interest you in terms of integrating into your future buildings yes so um we are uh, experimenting with uh, new techniques so earlier the first two projects that i worked worked with i wanted to be completely natural so the two projects that we built were um, just out of stone lime and mud uh, but now we are also trying to see how a concrete behaves with these materials and um, so the two the two two uh, more projects that we worked on we introduced concrete as a material as well in those houses and uh, we used techniques so i am also a lorry baker fan um for people who don't know lorry baker is a is a brilliant architect who worked extensively in in, in india and uh, he has given us lots and lots of techniques and ways to build economically so i'm using filler slab which is one of his techniques in one of the projects that we did we are um, experimenting a lot with different kinds of stone masonry 
so living in rajasthan i realized that every every geographical location or every um you know every 10 kilometers there is a different kind of stone technique uh, which um, the masons used to use earlier based on the kind of stone that they get from they mine from the earth there and that sort of really interested me because i wanted to learn th- those different kinds of techniques so uh, we are experimenting with different kinds of stone techniques also how sheets are used to build walls and different kinds of shapes of stones used for different kinds of wall building so we're doing a lot of that so yes using a lot of new newer but still older techniques to build various things so clearly the practice is evolving and and so are your interests do you do you see yourself uh, returning to your conventional uh, practice of uh, urban design or do you think now clearly the path is set for the studio to experiment more with these kinds of uh, expressions and materials and techniques well um um earth architecture is definitely interesting because it has so many new materials and new techniques and there is a lot of research and then once you've researched you put it on um whereas interiors is something that we've already been practicing since past 10 years and uh, you know we we quite set with the, the methods with the materials the techniques our team uh but i would definitely say that interiors is like my backbone so if this is something new then interiors is always there what i'm trying to do is learn a lot learn from my earth architecture and also trying to incorporate that into my interiors practice um but i think i am going to be living with both of them because um they are equally important for me and you know very very dependable so so yeah so what would your guidance be to a young firm just like yours looking at uh, so everybody has this dream right i mean earth architecture compared to what is more conventional really has a magical quality to it when you see these buildings so really what would be the starting points clearly you have take, gone out and really uh, uh, walk the talk by actually doing what you what you maybe had an interest in but w- what are the learnings or where where should one go where should one begin do you have some guidance to offer in that capacity well i think if you want to do it then just go for it because there is no other way really uh, nobody is going to come to you and say that do this um so if you want to do it and if you feel that you feel that urge then definitely just go for it um one doesn't need to do a huge project at a time um so you can just start with something really small and maybe just like a bench so even if um, you do a rammed earth bench you know it's i i think it's it's beautiful because you once you've got your hand dirty and that is when you realize how much you will love it um also i understand that a lot of people it's not very easy for them to just go for it and do it so um, there is there are also these other ways to collaborate because there are lots and lots of earth architecture uh, firms who are looking for people to collaborate because we don't have too many people in the industry who are practicing this so um it's i i think you can just collaborate with anyone and everyone will be quite happy to introduce these methods and techniques with other people so it's been a, a lovely discussion there are a couple of questions i thought we could take if it's uh, if it's okay with you so yeah. we have one sure. which uh, which which asks uh, that really is this design practice and construction process scalable and really cost effective for rural housing i mean when you compare the cost with more conventional methodology how, how do you rate the how do you rate the the two so um so this technique i will not say is very um very affordable i mean um, the regular kind of construction that we see this kind this technique of building also is will cost almost the same as a regular house um uh, but the difference here is that you're not um, so you know um in a regular uh, concrete house we are using a lot of our money 
um, and uh, for the material that we are purchasing. So a lot of money goes to buy the steel, a lot of money goes to buy cement um, and other kinds of raw materials. Uh, whereas this kind of construction, the raw material is practically free, right? Because earth you're getting from your own soil, um, sand is not expensive again, um, but it is very, very extensively labor driven. Um, so, so just think it in a way that when you're using these kind of techniques and building these kind of techniques, your the money that you're um, utilizing to build the house, you're giving it to the people, the masons who are working for you. And, and that is how you're kind of circulating your own economy, your own local economy and making that better instead of giving the same amount of money to these big industrialists and people who are um, making steel and cement and stuff in big factories. So, yeah. So Interesting. And another question that is posted is, I think maybe we saw it partly in some of the pictures. What, what is the type of flooring that you have used in both these projects? So I have used uh, Kota stone um, in in Barak, in the Kothi project. Um, and in Earth Build, the, the Earth Bag house, which was the Golgar, is lime floor. It's a lime floor. Yes. So it's been lovely, uh, Shipra, uh, lovely to see the work that you're doing, uh, the, the, the expressions that you're creating, the drive that you have for a young practice. It's difficult for them to, let alone do the conventional stuff. But when you step out of that uh, realm and you go out and start exploring work like that, it's uh, yeah. truly refreshing to see uh, work like that. So uh, compliments, uh, it, it really is uh, uh, two beautiful pieces of architecture that you have created. Thank, uh, you, so thank you for taking, taking the time and uh, spending some time with us and sharing sharing this data and uh, yeah, all the best for your future endeavors and I'm sure there's a lot more to see. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot for having me. It was wonderful talking to you. Likewise. Thank you so much, Shipra. Have thank a nice you. evening. Bye. Thank you.